Welcome to On Networking. Conversations with thought leaders in networking technologies. Brought to you by Okay, we're back with uh, Eric, uh, Distinguished Engineer in Land Security from Cisco Systems, and we're talking about his uh, new book coming out in September 07 on land security. Uh, we've just finished talking about some of the uh, basic Layer 2 and VLAN security features that he discusses, and now we want to talk about some of the more advanced features. So uh, Eric, what are some of the more advanced things that we need to know about Layer 2 security? Okay, beside the well-known techniques, there are other attacks, for instance, against um, CDP, the Cisco Discovery Protocol, or the new version from the I, uh, IEEE LLDP. Same thing for power over Ethernet. This is well used on IP phones, but is it secure, yes or no? Of course, it is secure, but we need to understand how to secure a switch with this. Uh, the default configuration is not obvious, mm. so you need to get information. Same thing, IPv6 is coming more and more in your network, with Vista and OS6 running IPv6 by default. IPv6 has got the mechanism similar to ARP to mm -hmm. discover the mapping between an IPv6 address and a MAC address, so you need to secure it as well. So that's one part of the book, for instance. And then after we go to another part, which is about denial of service attack. Uh, a switch can be the target of a denial of services attack. In some very specific case, when it's receiving traffic, the traffic is no more switched by the hardware of the switch, but is going to the CPU. For instance, ping packets or NetFlow packets mm -hmm. or some specific R packets. So if you are flooding the switch with enough, and enough is about 10,000 per second or so 50,000 per second packets, the switch CPU is going to 100%. And then he has no more CPU available for spanning tree or OSPF. And then using all your spanning trees, you are losing all your OSPF adjacencies and you're in big trouble. And switches as well are not only the target of a DOS, but they can be used to detect those, and they can be used as well to mitigate those attacks. So we're talking about like scavenger class stuff? And exactly, so or we can apply QoS or techniques like control plane policing, mm -hmm. or we can apply some specific VLAN ACL to block some traffic, to do some rate limiting, applying QoS. It's a little bit more complex to configure, but you need to do it, because you never know when the next one will be coming, if somebody will be launching an attack on yours, even if you're a small enter company. So um, do I have control plane policing available on most models of uh, Cisco Switch, even when we get down into the lower levels, like the 3560s? And no, that's, you are pointing to a problem right now. It's available roughly on the high-end switches. Mm -hmm. uh, the best implementation is on the Sub 720 on the Catalyst 6000, which is even done mostly transparently for the user. So the default setting should be OK. But if you go to all the platforms or low-end platforms, control plane policing is not yet there. Uh, so this might be an issue. So if you can be the, the target, if you want to protect against DOS, you need to identify and make an inventory of your assets and say, this one supports control plane policy, this one does not. Mm -hmm. And maybe do some kind of upgrade, or okay. at least you know your situation. So what about this uh, layer two encryption stuff? I've talked to people in you know, the various government agencies that are using hardware layer two encryptors, but it sounds like we've got something even better coming along now. Exactly. IEEE has standardized something called LinkSec or MacSec, the two names are the same roughly, and this is IEEE 802.1 AE, which is encrypting the frames basically at layer two. Think about wireless encryption, mm -hmm. but done on a wide environment. So it's really up by up from one switch or from one Ethernet adapter to the switch and from one switch to another switch. It encrypts everything there. And is it like IPsec or is it more like wireless or TK? It, it's uh, it's more regarding, it's not IPsec because there is no encapsulation at uh -huh. all. So we take the frames and we just simply encrypt it on the fly. Mm -hmm. Of course, we need to get an integrity check, like on wireless, so right. we're adding a few bytes. And we are using AES to do the encryption oh, okay. very fast. Now, it's kind of similar to IPsec in the sense that the key negotiation is on that protocol pretty close to Ike, like in IPsec. Mm -hmm. But besides this, it's more like wireless. Now, is this feature available in any uh, Cisco products yet? Yeah, I expect some product coming in with quite soon. OK. So let's just change the subject for a second. Let's say that I'm a, you know, a young network engineer, and someday I want to be 
a distinguished Cisco security engineer like yourself, what types of experience should I be trying to get to, uh, in, in 10 years or so, be in a, in a position like yours? Okay, one thing is to read a lot, um, because security is, is what I like in security, is ever-changing. Every year there is new threats, new mitigation techniques. You need to read a lot. You need to practice a lot as well. And talk to a lot of people to learn a lot mm -hmm. of things. That's basically it. So be pretty curious. Uh, never believe that you know something. You know nothing. Right. The attacker is always smarter and knows more than you. So try to catch up, basically. So one thing I, I've noticed in a lot of people who are trying to get into security is that they spend all their time thinking about attacks and trying to keep up on what's the latest attack. And we were talking to uh, some of your colleagues this morning about design. How do you think that, uh, it, it seems to me anyway, that, that good design is an integral part of security. And that's something that sometimes a lot of people don't think about, especially when they're getting into the game because they spend all their time looking at attacks. So can you talk a little bit about how design affects security, especially at the advanced levels? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're right. Security is not only about finding an attack and trying to patch it because we're in a reactive mode. Security is mainly about being proactive. So making a design, trying to see what can fail and be sure that whatever happens to your network, being an attacker trying to crack you, being a bug in a software, being a bug in hardware, being some kind of catastrophe outside of your network, it needs to be safe. So you really need to take a design, exactly like you do a design a building or a bridge, right? The engineers there take the, the worst case and you make the bridge and make the building resistant to the earthquake, for instance. So design is a key part of security. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for talking to us today. It's been very informative. Welcome. Thank you. For more information, visit onpodcastweekly.com and subscribe to all our podcasts. Brought to you by the publishing imprints and information portal of Pearson Education.